Harry Gregson Williams and Rupert Gregson Williams are the composers of The Gilded Age on HBO. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Um, so nice to be with you both today. Uh, I wanted to start with um, working with Julian Fellows. This is the first time that either of you have collaborated with Julian. So I just wanted to start by asking what kind of um, questions or, or guidance did he have for you when he was trying to decide what the sound of the series should be? Actually, we didn't, uh, Rupert and I didn't have too much contact with Julian at first. Um, uh, and the kind of conduit to him was one of the producers, uh, Gareth Neen, um, and, uh, and the showrunner. Um, so so um, we, uh, we would hear, we would obviously when we sent music over to um, the filmmakers, they would send it on to, to Julian and we'd hear back from there. Uh, I think the first thing was that they didn't necessarily want it to sound like Downton Abbey. Um, so they wanted to make it make make a slightly different inroads in, into it in that in the, that respect. We spent the first um, few weeks uh, just creating themes uh, and sort of harmonic structures and experimenting with instrumentation um, before actually starting to write any music to picture. And that was a helpful period. Uh, um, what do you think, Rui? It was probably two or three weeks, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, we spent probably even longer than that, maybe three yeah. or four weeks. And what, what was interesting, Harry says that they didn't want it to be like Downton, it was, and he's quite right. They, I guess the first conversation we had was, you know, this is a, this is a country, this is a time in the country in the United States that's exciting and, and, uh, uh, and there's energy and, and money being, being thrown everywhere for industrialists, and, and Downton was sort of, on the decline so there was there's a very different energy to both those shows and so we started off by sort of injecting energy into it um because of that really yeah that's exactly um what i wanted to ask you both about next which is the main title theme which i find so incredibly addicting and it's very propulsive uh and it also has some very nice delicate kind of uh sections to it too i'm kind of moving through this industrial period into the more um, you know, kind of gilded uh, homes and characters. So I just wanted to ask you, what are some of the images that that you drew on or some of the themes from the series that you really wanted to capture in in that main title? Uh, and Rupert, uh, we could start with you. Um, well, as I said before, energy was the was the first thing, the, the sort of the Russell, the new money, the industrialists. Um, and you, you talk about, um, you know, pictures and what have you. They did send us a... Um, kind of a cheat sheet i forget what they would have called it harry um but a, a video of just ideas a swatch of of, of you know industrialists yeah. of smoking chimneys of, of railways being built of important men drinking scotch with big cigars uh with ladies in 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 lots lots of money being spent on 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 um clothes and palaces and and what have you and so the energy was the first thing we went for and then there was the, the across the road there's the old money which is a little quainter and um and so that's probably what you're alluding to with the with the um more melodic and and sweeter parts of the melody of maybe reflecting maybe reflecting the old money and um and uh, but yes it, that that's that's really what it was all about with the main theme is is the sort of contrast between energy propulsive is a good word for it um but with sort of scope and and a melody too because yeah, of that's the, right the i mean we we um we we actually had the theme the, the main theme which we used in the main for the main title um we had well, we had created for the russell family for the new money kind of thing on that side of the street as it were um and uh when we got these images yeah as rupert said they were kind of i don't know it was jewelry chandeliers um it wasn't quite an animatic it wasn't something that that flowed um but they were just sort of images um that they were toying with um so when we had that it was pretty clear um the direction we wanted to go in and we lifted the the russell theme uh, uh which was a uh, the the filmmakers really liked um when we'd been deploying it in the first couple of episodes and um uh, so well, look let's let's take that and and uh and run with that so we created a kind of ostinato um which is a very busy sort of string pattern uh to sit sit uh this melody on um and off we went uh and, and it's interesting with main titles that it's kind of a 
you, you, they gave us these images, as, as we said, um, we started working uh, to this concept of using the Russell theme uh, and adding this, this big propulsion to it. Um, and we'd played that for them. They were really excited about that. And gradually they would then send us back moving images and then a, a more finished image. And, and so it was a, a to and fro a lot with the main title. Yeah, Harry, I want to ask you too, something you've been alluding to um, in your answers, which is the instrumentation, because this is a period piece, you know, kind of late 19th century. So I just wanted to ask, um, we can start with Harry and Rupert if you want to uh, chime in too. Just, you know, how much do, does a period kind of um, dictate what instrumentation you use? Um, or do you feel kind of more liberated to just go where, you know, the kind of themes and the characters take you? Well, I think the, the um, because it is set when it is set, uh, we weren't going to go too far off the reservation, as it were. Um, so we had uh, uh, the, the, the bulk of the, the sound of, of, of the score is orchestral. Uh, it's based on that, a good sized chamber orchestra, which HBO were good enough to, to give us for every episode we did. Um, so we had that, but we were able to, to push the boat out a little bit and, and use slightly less um, conventional orchestration um, to, to characterize some of these, these, these um, the people that we meet along the way. And the thing being written by Julian, the characters are pretty deeply drawn. Um, and there's a little bit of comedy in there. So we had to find a way of, of, of lightening some moments. Um, and I think one of the reasons I think we got the gig is because my, bro my brother had done The Crown, the first season of The Crown. And I, I, certainly speaking for myself, and I think this is probably what Julian liked, I, when I saw the first season of The Crown, I quite liked the music, because, um, um, particularly because there was a kind of quirk to it. There was, it wasn't straight up and down string quartet and harp, as you might imagine that sort of this sort of music would be. Um, there were synths involved, a couple of colors. Um, and when we, we set sail on this one, um, they didn't reference the music from the crown, um, but the, the film looks so really open for us to, to be able to explore um, different colors in the instrumentation and the orchestration. Yeah, they, they, they every time we, we hit on something that was a little unconventional or was not of the time, that sort of made Michael, the showrunner, jump up and down. He, he was excited about that. <laughs> yeah, he got excited about that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what, so Rube, what, 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 what instruments can we think of? that the, uh, we, used, we used quite a lot of strumming stuff, which, which helped us with, uh, with the kind of propelling scenes from, from beginning to end. Um, so there were guitars, there were ukuleles. Um, there was a cantele, which is a strong hammer dulcimer yeah. type instrument. Um, and there were some synths, you know, Rupert and I both in our own work uh, tend to produce scores that are kind of hybrid between organic uh, orchestral instruments and, and synths. Um, but without, without being, you know, we're doing it in a tasteful way, hopefully. Um, but that, 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 that uh, yeah, Michael, Michael's ear went to those things uh, when, whenever we come up with something and he'd encourage us down that path. Yeah, I mean the the stories are all they're sort of timeless, aren't they? Because there's there's love, there's there's um, there's yes rivalry and 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 all the rest of it, and 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 money being spent and lost, and it's kind of it's the same as if we were writing for it, for it now, as long as we didn't make everyone foot tap too much. It didn't yeah. really matter about the instrument. So you can see the instruments there behind Harry. Well, uh, and that's kind of the writing tools that we right. we use, and doesn't. It's not a conscious thing. Once it becomes a conscious thing, then it becomes, um, then you feel it and, and, and it takes you out of the film. But if you just use it to drive. But the percussive and energetic thing that, that we were driving at for the Russells and the new money is always really helpful with, you know, modern instruments make, make that, yeah. that an, an easier, it's an easier tool. Yeah, thematically that makes a lot of sense because um, you know the Russells are new money, but also new technology and innovation. So I love the way that their kind of sound, you know, emulates that. Um, Rupert, I want to ask you, you know, since Harry just alluded to your work on the Crown, um, this is one of the rare occasions uh, that the two of you have uh, collaborated on a score. So just wanted to ask you, you know, um, why this project? You know, what what about this project made sense that the two of you should come together? Because um, obviously the results uh, speak for themselves and are are quite quite phenomenal. Well, we I think when we fell on this one, it wasn't something we were searching for. Although we'd said because we did Catch Twenty Two together um, with George Clooney, we'd said we'd do it again. But uh, this time around, it, we we fell into it because 
um, we were both interested in the project, obviously with Julian and we both, you know, um, um, we were both, but unbeknown to each other, we were we were shortlisted as as a, a couple of the composers, two of the three composers that that, that they were talking about. Um, and I think Harry was told before I was that that I was involved, and and then I was told, and then we had a chat and uh, teamed up. Yeah, my agent yeah. told me that there were two other people they were seriously looking at, and one's your brother, because we don't, we don't have the same agent. So I think what what happened was we we kind of um, we thought this is a good opportunity to put ourselves together and um and see if if they will go with that um which it's they... a good it's a natural fit though because we're both we both like writing melodies and and you know we and um and because we worked on catch uh, we it, i think we had you know that's where we learned how each other work and, and yeah, how you know going. and so that had given us a bit of practice for mm -hmm. collaboration so yeah, yeah. George, George it's great we're already really. talking about the second second season is already being shot at the moment so yeah, um, Harry, I wanted to ask you, um, you both alluded a little bit to the sound of the Russells, um, you know, in the in their music, but which became the main title theme. I wanted yeah. to ask you about capturing some of these uh, dynamic moments of their character. We have some some songs like I'm Begging You, where we really see in the scenes uh, George Russell's ruthlessness. Right. So how do you capture those kind of character traits that we don't always see, but when they come out, they're very stark um, sure. and obviously very important? Well, he, um, actually, George, I mean, he, this is a great character to focus on for us because although we had the, the Russell theme, which became the main title, as you, as, as, as you said, now um, that, that thematic material um, wasn't quite right for what we wanted for George Russell in particular. So not just the new money, but, but, but George and his, his plotting, his, uh, yeah, rather ruthless streak. Um, so w we just wrote another theme for him. Um, so that's an additional um, piece of our artillery we were able to use. Um, and I think, uh, Rue, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we orchestrated that with a, a low um, snake-like bass clarinet sound. Um, and there are a couple of scenes where he's, yeah, he's, his ruthlessness comes, comes out, as you say, that, this, that particular cue. Um, so it was it, it, um, something that Hans said to me years ago, Hans Zimmer, uh, when I was fretting over... Um, whether I had enough themes and oh, I don't recall the movie it might have been chicken run or something like that um, he said well can you can you can you have too many themes I mean is it possible to have too many um, so I said well maybe not um, so in this occasion we did but, but again going back to Julian's writing his characters are so deeply drawn that that um, that they're kind of crying out for their own identity musically so we were able to to explore that and George Russell in particular had this rather um, snake-like uh, plotting kind of theme there's a there's a third sort of group that we wrote themes for as well obviously you've got the old money the new money money but there's the downstairs the servants quarters which obviously a lot of the characters grew through the series and, and become an important part yeah. an integral part of the stories yeah. and that's an important theme and um, um, um that's a magic though. It's a bit more rough and ready, isn't it? We, I think we used a solo fiddle, slightly yeah, a little bit more folky. Bit of an Irish lilt to it. Um, yeah. yeah, and they're kind of it's kind of a busy little theme. It's not not a major theme in the, in the movie in, in the series yet. We, we we have no idea what's going to happen in the second series. <laughs> maybe the maybe the yeah uh, yeah maybe maybe the downstairs will become the upstairs, the new upstairs. Who knows? Uh, but we've we, we've got some thematic material to run with if that should happen. There are so many characters on this series, as you're alluding to, not just the kind of uh, antagonism between new money and old money, but the downstairs and also Peggy and the world of, of uh, newspapers and print. I mean, there's so it's it's such a rich kind of universe. Yeah, I know, um, one of my favorite episodes actually was um, or one of my moments of one of the episodes was Q Rupert wrote, which was um, it was the Edison moment. So when when um, when when what, what building is it that's lit up? Is it uh, uh, <laughs> I can't remember. I, I can't remember. It's a famous building. Um, it's still there, um, yeah, yeah. I think. Um, but but it, it was it was that was a, that was a neat moment for us because that was a coming together of of the old and the new in, in a way. This you know electricity suddenly happening. Yeah. But it was kind of fun to to see history happening in front of us, if you know what I mean. Um, and I I wonder I wonder if there are moments in the next series which will which will be similar. I'm trying to think what what would come next after electricity. I think 
motor cars were already there. Although we don't see a motor car in this one, do we? Do we? I don't think we do. So they have got to be than carriages. Yeah. But maybe they're going to pop up. Who knows? Yeah. One more uh, character related question, because there's just so many, but our really our entry into this universe of the Gilded Age in New York is uh, Marion. Uh, and you have a lovely uh, cue for, for Marion uh, and theme, uh, just to kind of captures both her kind of wonder at what she's seeing, but also her naivete, because we do see, you know, she kind of gets, um, you know, she trips herself up a bit trying to, you know, navigate this new world yeah. for her. So talk about trying to capture those, you know, those character traits of her, because she really is such a vital character to letting us enter this world. Rupert, we could start with you. Um, well, there's also another uh, trait of hers, which she, she's she's um, she's a little stubborn and a little cheeky, and and trying to push the the parameters and the barriers, especially as she's sort of um, uh, with with the old money. She comes from the old money, and she's uh, she's always sort of prodding them into trying to modernize themselves, and she helps with that, getting Peggy as the as as the secretary and what have you. Um, but that's that was a side. When we first wrote it, we wrote something that was was melodic and um, quite romantic. Yeah. Um, and I remember getting the note back. Actually, we need something a little bit more. This is this is how we perceive her. She's a little bit more edgy than that. She likes right. to push and, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah, the, the rules. And so we. Done. Yeah. Good, Ruth. A little bit cheekier, perhaps. It started off being a bit cheeky, and then it, you can use it in a romantic way. Right. But that was that's true that the um yeah i think we 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 had softened her theme a little too much and we we bought bought something a little bit more robust to the table and that really yeah. worked, worked for for them yeah uh, and before i let you go just uh, a question for each of you on i know you've said you haven't seen anything from season two yet they're just started shooting so it'll be a while but what do you hope to be able to do and expand the kind of sonic, you know, universe of the show? Um, is, are there any characters you hope to kind of expand or or different themes and motifs that you want to run with? Um, any kind of initial thoughts as you're waiting on on footage? I don't know. It depends if it's all set in Africa. We'll, we'll know where we're going, but <laughs> I have no idea. I, I, I'm excited to see to see where it's going to go because it is um, the the characters are um, are kind of ripe for. For moving forward and 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 it's a it's it's the age that that, that that i mean i have no idea what the time frame will be i'm presuming it will move move forward a few years not not leaps and bounds but uh yeah no time will tell yeah yes i mean we move, we move from edison and like you say mass printing and publishing and as harry said then we'll get into the other technology like cars and, and what have you perhaps season 60 will be the internet <laughs> <laughs> but um <laughs> <laughs> iPhones. that's yeah. great well i we do all hope that it has a very long and healthy run um yeah. harry and rupert thanks so much for talking to gold derby today and congratulations on the first season of the gilded age oh thanks very much thank you thanks. good to see you